In chapter 5, we're going to begin our study of quadratic functions uh, and quadratic equations. Uh, these first couple sections are dedicated to graphs of quadratic functions. In this first section, we're going to look at transformations used to graph quadratic functions. Uh, so we're going to be looking at kind of the basic parent quadratic function and then how transformations affect the graph of a quadratic function. The quadratic function, parent function, meaning the most basic simple quadratic function we have, uh, f of x equals x squared. Let's make a table of values that just go 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And we're taking these x numbers and we're plugging them in for the x and we're squaring them. So 2 to the second power is 4, 1 to the second power is 1, 0 squared is 0, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4. And if we plot these points, here's where they fall. We can even plot one more that'll fit on this graph. If I do an x value of 3, I would get 9. 3 squares to 9, and negative 3 squares to 9. So if I were to put those values in my table, that's what we get. And if we connect them, we get a graph that's called a parabola. They are, of course, U-shaped, as it appears. But the graph of all quadratic functions, all x squared functions, are parabolas. Some may be wider, more narrow than others. Uh, we can move them around, we can flip them over, we can do a variety of things with them, but they're all going to have the same basic shape. Um, all parabolas have a vertex point, which is right there at the bottom of this graph at the origin. Uh, they also all have, and I'll put this in a different color, um, they also all have what we call a line of symmetry. A line that kind of cuts the graph in half. Uh, so these graphs are symmetric. Um, their basic graph is symmetric about the y-axis. Now in this lesson, what we're going to look at is a transformational form of the graph of a quadratic function. We're going to look at what's commonly called vertex form. Vertex form is this. We see uh, in here, we see the x squared. So we see the squaring function, the quadratic function. In this form, we locate the vertex at the point hk. So very similar to what we've seen in the past with absolute value functions from back at the end of chapter two. Uh, this is done the same way. We take the opposite of this number as the x. We take this number as the y point of the vertex. Um, the a in front, the a is a stretch or shrink factor. Uh, and if a is negative, less than zero, the graph is going to flip over. And we'll see all that in a variety of examples in this particular section. What we're going to begin with first is just uh, investigating the vertex, just how do we move the graph around. All right, this first slide, we're going to look at the effect of adding and subtracting numbers inside the parentheses, inside the second power. I'm going to begin by just graphing the x squared because I want to see what the parent function looks like in comparison to these functions. So we get an idea of how things are actually moving. So the x squared graph, um, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4, negative 3 squared is 9. I'm just going to make this a nice dotted line.
All right, there's x squared. Now let's look at x minus three quantity squared. Uh, the minus three moves the vertex from zero, zero, moves it to the point three comma zero. Moves it right here. Now from that point, I'm gonna do the exact same pattern of points. So from this point here, one to the right squares to one. Go back to that vertex point, two to the right squares to four. Go back to that point, three to the right squares to nine. And it's gonna be the same points on the other side. Uh, negative one squares to one, two to the left squares to four, three to the left squares to nine. And there it is. We can see that the entire graph has just shifted three units to the right. The next one, x plus five quantity squared. The vertex is at the point negative five, zero. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I just do my squaring pattern. One squares to one, two squares to four, three squares to nine, one squares to one, two squares to four, three squares to nine, and there it is. So, to summarize, really, uh, here, Adding and subtracting numbers inside the power, inside the parentheses, have the effect of just simply sliding the graph left and right. Minus numbers go to the right. Adding numbers go to the left. Next set of problems, I'm going to again begin with my parent function, my x squared. So 1 to 1, 2 to 4, 1 to 1, 2 to 4. I'm just going to do it a little bit smaller this time and just do these five points. Okay, so there's x squared. Okay, now the first one we're going to do to compare is x squared minus 6. This changes the vertex to 0, comma, negative 6. So it's going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to right here. And that's the point we begin from, and we count from there. One squares to one, two squares to four, one to one, two squares to four, and so the graph looks like that. Okay, the next one x squared plus 2, vertex moves to 0 comma 2, so it moves right here. From that point, 1 squares to 1, 2 squares to 4, 1 to 1, 2 to 4, and it looks like that. So we could certainly say that adding and subtracting numbers behind the second power, okay, outside the parentheses, have the effect of moving the graph up or down. Okay? Subtracting moves it down, adding moves it up. Now we can no doubt combine those transformations to get a full vertex point. Um, here the vertex is at the point negative four negative 3. Again, inside, left and right, outside, up and down. So we're going to move to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and that's where we're going to start. Now from that point, we're going to do our squaring pattern. 1 squares to 1, get it on both sides there. 2 squares to 4, get it on both sides. 
go back to the vertex, 3 from the vertex squares to 9, and get it on both sides. And that's about as much as we're going to fit on this graph. There's our parabola. Much, much easier, I think, you're going to find this once you really get the hang of it. Much, much easier than making tables of values every single time. Okay? We don't want to be doing this. Okay? It's tedious, it's time consuming, um, and, and it's, we much more want to kind of develop these patterns because these patterns are going to apply to every function that we graph. Okay, this next one. I'm going to again start with x squared, the basic graph. We've seen it enough times that you should be able to do it on your own by now. Just doing 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Those are the points of my parent function. Okay, so there's x squared. Now what about when we don't add and subtract numbers. When we don't add and subtract numbers, we're not moving this graph off the origin. Let's be clear about that. The vertex is going to stay at 0, 0. Um, when we're multiplying by numbers, it affects uh, the, the wideness or narrowness of the graph and if it goes upside down or not. Here the negative sign flips it over and the 2 stretches um, times 2. It pulls things 2 times as far vertically. Okay, So it looks like this. Uh, we begin, we've got the point at 0, 0, right at the origin. First point should be 1, 1. All right? But this one's going to double its vertical distance. Instead of going up 1, it's going to go up 2. But this one doesn't go up 2, it flips over, it goes down 2 to there. And the other point on the opposite side does the same thing. Okay. So from the vertex, normally when we go 2, 2 squares to 4. right? But this one isn't going to go to 4 up. We're going to double that distance up and go to 8. But it's not going to be up here 8 because it flips over. It really needs to go down 8. Same thing on the other side. And we're not going to fit the next point on the graph. So this is ready. To draw. Okay, so we can see then definitely that the negative flipped it over. And if you look closely, you can see that this is a little bit narrower than the previous graph. It's a little more skinny than the previous graph. Okay, this next one, the last one here, uh, it's not negative, so it doesn't flip over. It's positive. It's going to open up. Uh, the half is going to shrink the points by half. Okay, So it's going to start at the origin still. Instead of going up one, it's going to go up a half. Instead of going up four right here, it's only going to go up two. Okay? Instead of going up nine, we're going to go half of nine, which is four and a half. And this one's big enough, we can fit one more. Um, normally, when we go four, 4 squared would be 16. What's half of 16? The answer is 8. So 4 is going to go to 8. And we can go ahead and connect. So it looks kind of like that. And so we can see the effect of the half makes the graph wider. Okay, so Smaller numbers, fractional numbers, make the graph wider. Uh, bigger numbers than one, like this, make the graph skinnier.